When the husband found out about the group intimacy involving his wife and five men, he could have lost his temper and exploded with rage. But he chose a different solution, and it amazed everyone. Check out this story to see how he handled that challenge and what happened next. I want to tell you a story that happened to me in real life a few years ago. I was married at the time, but what I had found out about my precious wife left me no choice at the time. And now I'm a bachelor. As corny as it sounds, I met my ex-wife Margarita on the dating site. We met once, met twice, I was quite comfortable with her. And most importantly for me, there was something to talk about. Our meetings gradually became more and more soulful, and at one point I suggested she start living together. Being together with this Rita also suited me, and I asked her to marry me. We got married. Some time later, we had a daughter. In general, days went by by days, months by months, two years passed, and it was little by little time for my wife to get out of the maternity leave. However, almost just before going to work, she said she quit. So she had nowhere else to go. Well, never mind, let the extra year to babysit, I thought then. But as it turned out, the reason for such behavior at the end of maternity leave was quite different. A couple of months after talking about the work, my wife began to literally change before my eyes. Their strained relationship with her mother suddenly became supposedly perfect. On every convenient and inconvenient occasion, my wife was eager to visit her mother without ever dragging me there with her, much to my surprise. As it happens in other such stories, my wife, just like all the other heroines of such stories, began to spend hours in front of the mirror to answer intimate questions with silence and all in this spirit. Hmm. I guess it's some kind of special shredder's firmware and when another man shows up for his own, this typical program for all shredders is turned on. Well, not the point. I was young then, as they say, and hot. And in response to my wife's behavior, not only did I not suspect anything, but I tried to understand my other half. Perhaps she is so tired of life or child troubles, I thought then, and offered to take her on a trip abroad. There to get some fresh air, not only their bodies, but above all heads. However, her response to my proposal rather cleared my head. Well, let's do it this way. You go on your own, and I'll go sometime later, I go to the bottom. What news, I thought then, and from that moment, I began to suspect something wrong. And that very trouble only gained momentum over time. While she was in the shower, I occasionally looked at her phone, but there was absolutely no crime, of course, I did not find. But apparently the lack of experience of my wife in adultery eventually still took her and let her down. And such were the cases of correspondence and social networks. When I was in the room on the horizon, his wife defiantly allegedly accidentally got up and left for 10 minutes in the kitchen. As I understand it now, so that I could easily and quietly read any of her correspondence and social networks. Of course, it was totally clean. But no matter how much rope to see and the end to be, and once I went to our common laptop in the history of the browser to find their previously closed page, I suddenly saw that the history has been cleared. Yeah, I don't recall clearing anything. And I purposely went to several sites on the internet and wrote down which ones. Going into the same browser on my laptop the next day, I found again that the history was clean. I do not want to say anything about all women on earth, but think about it. How many of you know people whose main and first thought in life is only to clear the history in the browser every time after itself, especially among women? Here, and I know such people a little bit, not a single one. The computer is the key. I think this is clear to everyone, but how to get out of there all the things I seem to have to be interested in. The computer is clean, and the wife, the wife, of course, will not say anything. In general, Scouring the internet, I found nothing worthwhile, and therefore took the computer to my acquaintance's specialist. Well, there you go, they said in the service center, and explained that when you press the three keys and after entering my special password, the program will take screenshots of the entire screen and everything that happens on it, but only for the first 30 minutes. That's probably enough for me, I told them, 
and after a couple of days I was almost speechless. When I went into the program and looked at what my wife was up to, I cringed. Before my wide open eyes flaunted her secret email, in which she conducted all these correspondence. To be precise, there were five. From the correspondence, I learned that she had long been as if divorced, and that these five knights of the deer were ready to take her in and support her only for her beautiful and long legs. She pampered them with pictures like this, too, knowing how to tease them, and hint that there might be no more sequels like the last one. You have to hand it to Margarita. All five of the guys were, at least judging from their conversations, fairly well-off citizens. And judging from her impressions that I had read about the expensive restaurants, they had already quite confirmed their income to this right. Anyway, I was sitting in front of my laptop and didn't even hear the front door of the apartment open behind me. My wife had come. What to do? I got up from my chair, but suddenly I thought that a scandal would make no sense. She knows perfectly well that sooner or later I will find out. And accordingly, scandal is in her plans and she is sure she is ready for it. What then is to be done? Flashed through my mind, but my wife's next question immediately told me everything and prompted me. You won't have a thousand in debt, Margot asked me, and I suddenly remembered that she's unemployed and incomeless. Plus those five friends of hers, she was obviously chosen for their large salaries. It remains to be that this will be her weakest point. In giving money to my beloved wife, I immediately helped, but also with my calculation. In such good spirits, my wife became talkative later in the night. And right after that, which usually happens at night, I waited until she fell asleep and took a picture of her and myself next to her without a face. In the morning, I photographed our marriage certificate, put the newspaper with the date on our own bed, photographed her and already from my mailbox sent all these pictures to all five comrades. And as I understood from their expressions afterwards, to take a divorced madam, lying to themselves and to her husband, with a so-called trailer, was not desirable among them. And that same evening, I had a conversation with my wife. Pulling the cat by one place is not my habit. And as soon as I brought all her secrets to these five, I also advised her to go to her mother. The apartment was and is mine. It was bought before the marriage, and accordingly the only thing my wife is allowed to take is her washing machine. But only if there will be something to pay for the work of the movers. That's pretty much how it worked out. She for some time still asked to give her this laptop. Apparently in a telephone it has kept contacts of not all this five. But she does not know yet that its message to them will not make any sense because before it to them already contacted me. I'd want to tell you a story that happened to me quite recently a year ago. I was in complete shock when I accidentally found out that my wife was cheating on me. But the way I found out about it surprised me even more. It all started when I decided to play a joke on my wife and texted her about the fire. But what happened next, I could not even assume. In this video, I will tell you how fire revealed my wife's secret and how I reacted to it all. Don't miss it it will be very interesting. Now that I have moved on a bit from what happened and have put all the events in my head, so to speak, in chronological order, I am ready to share my original story of cheating with you as well. I met Anastasia when I was 27 and she was 23. She was working as a manager at a real estate agency. Introducing Nastya is easy, red hair, cute looks, and a very high degree of socialization. It seemed that Nastia could literally find common ground with the devil himself, and in her profession as a realtor this quality helped her greatly. As it turned out, later she was often helped out not only at work, but more about that later. In general, we began to meet and fairly quickly married. She was a newcomer from a small town not far from ours, and I had lived and grown up, and now worked here in a bigger city. I must say that for my friends, the news of the wedding was a shock. Nastia and I had only been dating for a couple of months at that point. But the thing was, when talking to her, I got the feeling that we knew her half of our lives, and I mistook it all for any of them at the time. Anyway, 
After the wedding, she moved in with me. We hadn't thought about having kids at the time, and as I understand it now, thank God. Nastia loved noisy companies, she had a lot of friends, apparently during her college years she had time to get acquainted with all, so to speak. Now I come to the point of my story. The starting point for my divorce with her was one Friday night. It was, as I remember it now, November. Why do I remember? I hadn't had time to change the tires on my car from summer to winter. It was warm that year, and there was no snow for a long time. And I drove my car very little that November. In short, in our town turns out to be a friend of Nastya. Came to our city from her hometown, either to visit friends or with her boyfriend. In general, the point is that in the evening my wife goes to meet her in a cafe. I basically gave her my blessing and was glad that this time I was not dragged there myself. I wasn't too interested in her friends, and at such meetings, when they dragged me there to get acquainted with friends, after literally half an hour, I felt there, to put it mildly, superfluous. Friday evening, my car is parked in the yard without tires. Tomorrow is Saturday. I'll probably be late, but you call me, my wife said. I can't give you a lift, I have no rubber and it rained on the road as a bad thing, well, instead of snow. And then it got below zero, and everything turned to ice. It's not safe to drive now. I'll call you a cab. Okay. I was expecting her to say something at this point, like, okay, as usual. But no, she said okay. My wife told me the address of the cafe, and I called her a car through the cab app on my phone. She got ready kissed me on the cheek, and drove off. I had already gone to the kitchen, got my dinner out of the fridge, and while I was eating my dinner in the kitchen, I decided to turn on some video on my phone. I unlocked my phone, and there was an unlocked cab app on the screen. I was about to minimize it, but suddenly I noticed that the car was taking a completely different route than the one I had put in there. You probably know that in some cab apps, it is possible to track on the map where the car you called is going right now. This is it. And here I should have stressed, but I didn't pay much attention to it. But it is unlikely that she could pick up a friend, or her for flowers, or for a thousand other reasons to go to the wrong place at first. In general, the car reached an address I didn't know, and the order came through. Just in case, I remembered the street and the house. That evening passed, my wife came home rather late. The situation was forgotten. A couple of weeks later Nastia and I quarreled over some trifle. I can't remember now, and it doesn't really matter. So that's what I'm saying. The point is that the quarrel was a trifle, and it lasted a very short time. My wife stood her ground, I stood my ground, and all of a sudden she says that she's clear with me, and she doesn't want to see me for a couple of days. Let me see, I thought at the time. What's with all the innuendo here? I'm living in my apartment here, and I'm not going anywhere. But it turned out to be even funnier. My wife that I need to go away did not hint. She quietly gathered his little backpack, took the necessary personal belongings, and quickly slammed the door. I calmed down, though I couldn't say I was very excited at the time. Closing the open cabinets behind her, I wondered. Think about it, for some reason she left too quickly and easily. First of all, there was no serious quarrel at all, so she took her things and left. And secondly, and most importantly, it means she has somewhere to go. I began to weigh the pros and cons, and there was no way that she left for a friend. My wife has to work tomorrow morning. You cannot go to the parents in the next town Nastia does not have a car. Can't go live in an office for a week either. They have nowhere even to sit there, let alone live or even sleep there. Of course you can say that she went to her friend's house like that, but it seemed impossible to me. Let's say if I came to a friend's house like that, no problem. Clearly, I would call ahead and move out very quickly. There are plenty of bachelors with apartments among my friends. In general, if it was about me, well, or about my friends, I would not be surprised this is the development of events. But girls, 
I think they are different. At least I've never seen her give her card to someone else, let's say for a month. Or one of them would come and visit another one. Moreover, it is necessary that this friend was also without family. A woman is not going to come into the family like that. And you also need to have your own place to live because you are going to visit her without even a phone call. What kind of wife has a 23-year-old friend with no family and no children in her own apartment? And the wife at the time of the quarrel was sure that she would have a place to sleep and that she would definitely be welcome. In short, the version with the girlfriend did not sink into my head. But the version of a friend of a man quite logically fit into the picture I described. However, while I was thinking about it all, I heard the front door opened. My wife had been back for less than an hour and a half. At first she was silent, but an hour later she started to make up with me. I pretended that everything was normal, but her ease with this here departure on a minor occasion stuck in me and as it soon turned out, for good reason. We made up in the traditional way for all young couples, my wife went to the shower. While she was there for half an hour, I took her cell phone. It was blocked. All right, let her come out. I'll make her unblock it right now, I thought at the time. And that's pretty much what happened. I asked her for her phone, and she gave it to me without a problem. All because it was clean. I didn't see any dummy calls, or rather unfamiliar numbers she had a thousand in her number she was using for work. But in the calls and messages I did not find anything reprehensible, but there was still an app with a cab. I looked into it and then saw that three hours ago, she had already written to this very address that I had already seen here a couple of weeks ago. Well, there are two possibilities here. Either her friend really lives there, or it's the address of the person who made me horns. It was pointless to ask my wife, we had made up now, and I could not hear any confessions even emotionally. I began to remember if there were any other signs and shifts, but I couldn't remember anything. My wife did not become colder to me, and there did not seem to be any questions about intimacy, but the clue to everything was given to me by a happy accident. She'd again decided to meet her friends after work. It was Constitution Day in mid-December, and they had a lot of lawyers at work there. Anyway, she said it was too late to wait for her today. Alrighty. I got home from work in the evening and decided to check it out, just in case. My heart wasn't in the right place. I knew which of my colleagues they were hanging out with, but I didn't have their phone numbers. Where could I get one? While I was thinking, I realized I didn't even need one. I went online to my wife, and in the list of her friends, I found her lawyer colleague. I texted her, congratulated her on the holiday, and asked if she would ever celebrate. And as I think is clear, no one had ever celebrated Constitution Day with them. They finished work and all went home. Then where's my wife? Well, it's time to make a call. I dialed her number. And Nastasia didn't pick up at first, and then wrote a message saying that they were very noisy and asked me to text her. I politely asked how the event was going and pointed out that the very employee I had just talked to on social media was the one they looked like the ringleader. The wife somehow made a one-sided joke and didn't say anything specific about the celebrations. Yeah. Anyway, I called my friend and asked him for advice. And what he offered me, and I and Nastia will remember for life. Well, do you think she is there at this address? Asked me a friend. Where else would she be? Colleagues at home asleep and have not heard about any constitution. I call my wife. She tells me about the party. That's it. But that's the address. That's all I got. What we did was this. A friend and I drove up to the same house where the wife has not for the first time. And how do you find an apartment, even if it's here? He and I were standing in the frosty entrance and judging by the numbers above the door jam, there were 50 apartments in the entrance. My friend suggested the solution. You're not going to knock on every apartment now. Besides, if your wife is there, they won't even open the door for you. You can't stay in the car till morning. Just call her and say, fire, and let her come to the house in a jiffy. And if no one comes out in five minutes, 
she's not here. You call her, tell her the fireman made a mistake. You don't have it, and that's it. As much as I resisted such nonsense, but we could not come up with anything better. I wrote to my wife what my friend advised, and in three minutes my wife and her friend, who was quite a man, ran out of the doorway. The wife was in a fur coat over her blouse. The man was in a jacket over a white shirt. They ran to his car, but on the way they met me and my friend. What a meeting, how are you? I did not expect, my friend asked my wife. In general, as it turned out, Nastia's socialization was an 11 out of 10. She still wrote me for a while that it was nothing to her, it's just her acquaintance, and with all her heart and soul she loves only me, but most importantly, an hour later I shuffled out of my apartment and thanked fate that I received this life lesson rather cheaply and without consequences. If you like this story, don't forget to rate it and like it. Thank you for watching.